welcome to your dev guide in this video we will be seeing 20, 20 questions regarding javascript interview question so this is the part two part one we have already released and uh, you can see over the 20 questions we have covered and apart from this uh, javascript interview question series we have done for the angular as well the 40 question we have already covered over there so make sure you visit those as well if you are angular developer and uh, let me show you that uh, video over there. So we have these two videos. So this is for a uh, Angular question series, this one and this one. So both are these over here. And uh, apart from that, we have done some mock interviews as well for a couple of, uh, for a couple of folks. So to get the get those away. we have done for the we have taken a few mock interviews as well the those who, who has requested for us on the Instagram or the our WhatsApp 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 number. So we have done those as well. So I found that the too many people are weak in the JavaScript, so that is why I have been taking this another part as a well, JavaScript question series. So in that video, in this video, we'll be taking 20 questions again. So hope so this 20 question you will get find useful in the next interview question. So let's begin. And uh, one request to all of you. So before starting this video, you should make sure that you should subscribe and uh, click on the notified bell so you can get notification whenever we release another videos. And make sure uh, share the videos with your uh, folks who has needed this. So let's begin with this video. Okay, so first question is what is the type of function? So basically, when you create a function in certain JavaScript, so if you try to print the type of any function, you will get something the regarding the function types of that. So this is regarding that. So this is kind of the question you should try to the console or something where so you can find what is the type of that. Then another part, uh, how to check the data type of the JavaScript in the JavaScript. Suppose you have one variable as a string. So how can you check the data type of, there is a type of operator. Yeah, so first one is we have the type of operator. So with it, we can check that what is the type of that a function, then variable, then class, then if you are creating some variable as a number, uh, then kind of the big int or something. So you can check the type of, so yeah, that is the one. And uh, third question is, uh, are JavaScript the initialization hosted? So basically, this is a tricky kind of question. So when you create one variable at line numbers 10 only, you can say at, at line number 10, you have created one variable, but you are trying to access that variable at line number 2, 3, 4, 5, anywhere. So the initialization going to hoist or assignment also going to hoist. So this is kind of the tricky question. So you should try this in the console or in the online editor. So you'll find this question uh, as a useful and uh, it's a kind of a tricky question. So you should check this as well. So basically in the hosting, your initialization going to host, not the assignment. So too many people get confused between this. So this is why I'm saying that uh, you should try this in the console. So all these three questions you need to check in the console. So you will get thoroughly understanding of the question. Okay, so next question is what is the global variables inside the JavaScript? So basically when you create a one variable or uh, suppose uh, if I ask you to create a variable without var, let and const. So this is one kind of question, tricky question. So if I ask the same way, so how can you create that global variable? So basically what happens, suppose you create a equal to 10, but you have not given any data type of it, any var, let or const. So in that case, what will happen? So it will be taking as a global variable and it will going to attach to your window object. So this is the kind of the question where they will ask what are the global variables? So you should know about what is this, then what is window object, then what is document object as in the reference of the global variable, not in the scope of the function and all. So this is the one question over there. So this time saying whatever the question is as a tricky part. So you should focus on those as well. So I'm just covering the main question and the sub question I'm just uh, telling in this video. So you should focus on those as well. Okay, so what is the use of the use stick basically? So use stick is nothing but uh, use uh, us to write a code in the strict fashion. Suppose you should not able to write a, a global variable. So you know about why the global variable has a problem whenever you are writing some code. Then if you are creating some uh, functions and you are calling that function some before that. So you, this should not be the proper way. So those kind of things cover inside the use stick. So how and another question how to enable that use stick in your javascript code so you should know that syntax as well so just go through the best research for the use stick is the w3 school they have almost a let me show you that as well so you will get it fine so
yeah so this is the javascript you speak series so basically you should know about all these concepts as well so how that going to register or something or not so in that case what will happen if you try to create a global variable so it will should return an error one function or trying to access before calling it so it will throw error so these things you should know about it so let us prepare about that as well okay so next question we'll move to the next slide now so the sixth question is that what is immediately invoke function basically this question i have covered i think in the last video as well but uh because of the that question and the what are the use of it so that is why i have added as a two separate questions so you should know what is immediately invoke function and what is the use of it so many people say that the immediately invoke function is nothing but the function call itself at the time of the load as soon as get function get executed it get executed at, in the line only so but there is the one catch over there suppose uh if i have one variable inside that immediately no function and i want to update that variable after some time so how can i do that so this is one counter question i do usually ask in the mock intros as well to just clear the concept of the immediately no function so basically we use a closure for it so you should know about the closures uh, with the immediately no function so try to create some variable over there and try to create another closure inside that function so basically closure you might know about so closure nothing but the function inside another function so this is the way you have an immediately no function and you are creating another function inside it so that is the same thing as a closure so with it only you can do that so this is one advantage of the closure over there so whenever you are writing whenever you are in interview and whenever you are trying to do answer for the closure so you can use this example as well with it okay so next question is regarding the design pattern so basically we have multiple types of the pattern over there so we have to follow those as well whenever we are writing code so as per your experience they will decide the question it to be asked in the deep or not so if you have some intermediate experience so you should know about the factory function then the class constructor pattern all these things so how can you do that that singleton pattern and all these things so try to create an example for it so it will be helpful for you okay so the ninth question is what is prototype in javascript so basically the prototype helps us to like the way we use a oops concept in the as compared to the inheritance so basically prototype does something related to that for us in the javascript this is the one thing and another thing whenever you are creating some function or any array or something so it has some different properties com comes with it so basically with the help of the prototype only we can use those functions so just uh, for this reference, I will give the reference for this uh, search prototype in JavaScript in the MDN. So MDN has a thoroughly uh, explanation about the prototype. So once read in thoroughly, so you will get to know about what is the prototype, what is the underscore underscore prototype, and what deep level you can go to check undefined only for that as well. So just check that document. Okay, so next question is related to the temporal dead zone. So basically, this question asked multiple times. So as you, whenever you tell the interviewer, so we have late and const as a global block scope. So basically, you cannot access that variable as a late and const before its initialization or declaration or something. So they will ask you. So the late and const going to hoist or not? If you say yes, then they will ask how, and if you say no, then they will ask why. So there is the one concept of the temporal dead zone so you just not, uh, need to read about it so how temporal dead zone behaves for latent const so at least uh, you tell about this concept so they interview will say that so at least you know in the depth so you have understanding of the concept in the depth as well so just prepare for that temporal dead zone as well okay so we'll move to the next slide so yeah so as a ESX feature, we know that the error function comes uh, with uh, some exa some more properties of it. So we have some more things comes with the ESX feature. So one common question is over there, what is error function and what is normal function? So what is the difference between both? So I will give the counter questions one by one. So you can note down those as well. So one difference between error function and normal function. Okay. Another function, if I try to access this inside an error function, so what will be print? Okay, and this is the third question. The fourth question is if we don't have the argument object in the arrow function, so how can I access those arguments? This is the fourth question. And the fifth question is the last question for the this. I can say each arrow function going to waste or not basically. So these are the 
11 question and we have five counter question regarding that so you should prepare both as well so what is call stack so basically what happened whenever you are creating some variable function for loop so everything goes to call stack and executed from them so go to go to the mdn doc or we have a good a series on the javascript so which is uh, given by the which is by the Akshay Saini for the JavaScript, Navasta JavaScript. So there he has created one video on that call stack. So how the call stack execution happen, actually he's shown everything over there. So do watch that series. So you will get to know about too many things as a, a deeper knowledge. So basically we know the concept at the higher level, but we don't go in the depth. So Akshay Saini done, does that very well. So it will help you to understand the concept in the depth. Okay, so this is regarding the call stack. So 13th question is the asynchronous and synchronous. So what will happen in the synchronous and asynchronous? You know that the JavaScript is synchronous as a interpretive language. So it get executed one by one. So to make it asynchronous, what we have to do then we what we use, all these things comes with it in this question. So we should know about the callback, then we should know about the set time mode, then set interval, then promises, then async await. All these things comes with the asynchronous. And if you want to make it as a blocking kind of the thing, then what we have to use? This is the one question. Okay, so the next question is related to the event loop and callback queue. So basically, we have callback queue, would, which put our browser API into the callback queue. Okay, and event loop cons constantly check your call stack. So basically, as soon as call stack get emptied, at that time, callback queue get executed. So do watch that video. I uh, or I will what I will do. I will put that video link into the description, so you can find that video. So it will be very useful for you to understand all these things as a event loop, callback queue, micro task queue. Uh, then we have uh, uh, another uh, call stack over there. So five things over there inside that. So do watch that video. I will put that the link in the description for you, so you will get the references of it. Okay, so next question, what is the progress chaining? So basically, when you create a callback inside and another callback, so in that way, it will create a callback help for you. To reduce such kind of things, we use a promise chaining. So we there about dot then, dot then, dot then. You can achieve the multiple uh, API calls or something, whatever as per requirement with uh, chaining. That is the kind of the chaining. So you can create a multiple chain for the promise. So this is the one. And what is the state of it? So we have resolved, rejected, and the pending. So these are the three states. So you should know about, so if it is resolved, then how can I get data? If it is rejected, then how can I catch it? And if it is pending, so what will happen in that case? So, so whatever question I'm uh, telling here now, so basically you do one thing. So try to create an example. So at least you will know the concept in the, as per the practically. So you can explain the concept better way. So this is the one question. Okay, so we'll move to the last slide of this video. So. Yeah, so we talked about asynchronous and synchronous. So basically, if you are using a asynchronous function, then we have to use await. Okay, so, but another question is here. If you are using asynchronous function, can we use without await? So this is the one question. Another question, if you are writing as a await, then is it mandatory to write asynchronous as a function? So this is the another question. You should know about it. Okay, so yeah, so as we talked about the event loop and also this is the 70th question are the part of that as well. So micro queue, what is the micro task queue, then what is event loop callback queue, all these things comes to the call stack event loop and all. So I will give that link in the description so you can watch that. Okay, so next question. Yeah, so this is also the same. So what the how the execution happens? Sometimes Inter will say that uh, create a example kind of thing in the notepad or he will give you whiteboard and try to ask you to uh, draw something so how that happened this code how this uh, he will give you one five, five six lines of the code and he will ask how that code this get executed into the call stack so that thing you should check okay so what is the web worker and the asynchronous task so this is kind of the another advanced question i have taken in this video for the experience level kind of the people so just watch about it and uh, prepare accordingly and the uh, last question i have added i think same question as i have added in the 11 okay so what is the difference between normal function and this one okay so 
okay so whatever we discuss for that in that question question so same thing applicable over here as well as a, this question is the same but sometimes the interval ask the same question in the different fashion so don't get confused with it so prepare accordingly your in the video uh, for your for your interview next uh, next interview and uh, uh, yeah so we have covered 20 question over here so do let us know if you have something question related to uh, javascript interview questions or uh, angular or react or anything in the front end or html css do comment or uh, do dm in the our our page so we can help you and we can try to help you to solve your queries and uh, try to give you some proper solution to clear your interview or something so that's it for this video